In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. In the light, we could see the land in which we wanted to live forever, and there was much rejoicing. To live in the land, we needed the wisdom and grace of the holy utilities, so we called the well drillers. And they said, Here the water is deep, deeper than thine pockets, and we were thirsty. Then the soil testers came and said, This land will not perk. You cannot install septic. And we were without toilets. Finally, the power company came and said, You have no easements. We cannot bring you power. And we were without lights. To our hearts and we despaired and then I said the land is crap and without value and I just pissed away one hundred thousand dollars when we wake hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done the good times just begun Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright foothills of North Georgia, the Appalachians begin. The early autumn sun, golden through the canopy, has not yet revealed the fall colors to come. A rock road covered with leaves from infrequent use leads to 15 and a half acres a hillside of Pleasant Valley. Clear mountain spring and crisp country air provide soul-cleansing serenity.
find our paradise? Or did we instead create our own nightmare? Hey, good morning, everyone. Dave here. Uh, talking to you today from beautiful, uh, well, the address says Morganton, Georgia, but we're really probably about five, 10 miles outside of there. A uh, little place called Picklesheimer Mountain off of Dave's Road, staying at a friend's property. He uh, gave me a deal I couldn't refuse. Um, he needed a table hauled up here. And for that, he's letting me and my wife stay up here for the week. She uh, hasn't joined me yet. I actually came up Monday. And uh, sorry, I'm looking down. I'm just trying not to fall down this road I'm walking on. Um, yeah, I came up Monday, got here late in the evening, and then a business trip took me over to High Point, North Carolina, a nice five and a half hour drive, and then uh, five and a half hours back here to get back. So really, this is my first day. It's now Wednesday, first really full day here at his cabin and his property. Um, Gray Wolf Lodge, so if you ever want to stay up here uh, and uh, in beautiful uh, Morganton, like I said, it's uh, yeah, Grey Wolf Lodge. I think it's My Country Cabins if you go there. And um, you can find his property there for rent. It's a really wonderful little place, three bedroom. And I want to thank Roy for uh, giving me the uh, chance to stay here uh, this whole week. So let me uh, kind of give you a quick update. Um, as the uh, intro to this video, <laughs> says in rather ominous tones um it sounds like i made a horrible well we made a horrible mistake and we bought some property and now we're screwed well fortunately actually none of that has come to pass uh, we haven't bought any property yet um, what we have done is we put a contract on some property and uh 15 and a half acres it's just outside of talking rock georgia which again isn't really much of a town in itself either it's um probably less of a town than Morganton. Uh, it's roughly halfway between Jasper, Georgia and LJ, Georgia. Off to the east is where this property is at. And uh, so, well, let me also give a quick disclaimer. So I'm not a real estate agent, nor am I a real estate attorney. So anything I'm telling you about buying or selling a property is strictly based upon my own experience. You will, I would suggest, consult your own professional expert and in fact, to cover that subject first, probably a couple of things you should know about buying real estate that's very different from selling real estate. First of all, selling real estate, there's tons of advantages to doing it for sale by owner. Um, the biggest is that you can obviously save thousands of dollars in commission fees. And literally, uh, like in our property, we ended up selling it for eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. If we'd paid out six percent, well, do the math. Um, a lot of money, and uh, we didn't pay out any commission fees because we did it for sale by owner. And what actually ended up selling it wasn't Zillow, wasn't any of the electronic listing sites. It was our twenty-five dollar yard sign that the uh, buyer saw and, and decided to you know, come in and talk to us and we ended up selling them property. So the $25 yard sign in a high traffic area was the most valuable sales tool, more valuable than a sales agent or anything else. Uh, but go into it cautiously, take your time, do your due diligence, get a good contract, get connected with a real estate attorney. Those are the things I would advise you to do for sale by owner. Um, on the opposite side of this is buying property. Buying property, I would highly recommend that you do engage a sales agent uh, or a, a buyer's agent because they will probably help navigate some of the things that we've had to learn uh, on our own as we go through this. Now, I'm also gonna make a distinction here about buying property um, that's different. It's so there's obviously you can buy an existing home uh, that's up for sale. You can buy a to be built home, maybe through a buy through a, a builder, or you can do like what we're trying to do is buy raw land. And I think each and every one of those has its own unique challenges. But 
and each and one of those a good real estate agent should be able to help you navigate what those challenges are um, the thing about buying land well let's cover the first two buying existing property yes you got to do your due diligence get a home inspection you know do make sure all that but your buying agent should help make sure you're protected on all that because they have a vested interest in the deal going through but you still need to check and make sure that all the uh, check boxes have been <laughs> properly checked as you go through but certainly a good real estate agent will help you accomplish that buying from a builder same thing all your major issues power electricity soil water they've already been figured out by the uh most likely by the uh, selling agent i'm sorry by the buying agent and the and or the builder and uh so you don't have to worry about those things now buying raw land this is kind of a different animal in of itself the first challenge is is that in a hot real estate market real estate agents i don't think are really that interested in selling land uh it's a low value proposition for them in this case we're spending if we successfully close a hundred thousand dollars and while that's a lot of money walking around in your pocket to them it's a maybe a three thousand dollar commission which again it's not a lot not uh not a uh, little bit of money especially if you stick in your pocket but if you consider the fact that probably for the same effort or even less effort in some cases they could uh sell the same they could go through the same process of selling a house for half a million dollars and make you know five times the commission that they would make from the same amount of pain and effort of selling a property for a hundred thousand dollars so don't expect a lot of enthusiasm from sales uh, agents or buyer agents in helping that not that they won't but I don't think they're going to be overly enthusiastic to be perfectly honest with you and that's really the biggest problem and so where we've kind of gone off on our own and uh, <clears throat> not really using a buyer's agent at this point um, so this is where we again have to really do our due diligence and uh, make sure we're not going to get ourselves in trouble so in the opening video I talked about three things and there's more than that but three major things you want to consider in my opinion when buying uh, I'll climb up this hill I'm so out of shape I lose about 30 pounds um, uh, you want to consider is obviously can you drill a well okay if you're so far off then some raw land well, let's distinguish raw land versus developed land. Raw land means there's nothing on it. It's just <laughs> dirt and trees, rocks, whatever. Developed land might be a lot that was developed in a community where they've already dealt with a lot of these things like easements, water, power, internet, etc. Okay, whoo, should be downhill again from here. Coming up the hill is gonna suck. Um, so, uh, so like this community actually, where my friend, the Great Wolf Lodge, is at, it's a developed community. And if you bought land in here, it's already got the power here. It's got it doesn't have water. That's something you have to look out for on your own. But it's got power and you and internet access so two of the major ones all your easements are taken care of all your right-of-ways are taken care of so the challenge here is this community was probably developed before some of the more modern laws were uh came about where in the old days you went out and you found some land you do whatever the hell you wanted on it well that's not really the case anywhere anymore i mean there is some unrestricted land that you can certainly do that but what are the challenges? So let's talk about water again. Long way to get back to the subject. Um, when you look at uh, drilling a well, 
All right, first of all, how high up above water are you? And uh, here are my friend's property. Uh, I mean, yeah, usually a good 800 feet. Probably if you drilled straight down you, to hit water maybe. Depends on how much land's above you too, right? Because you have to have a drainage area as water comes off the top of a hill or mountain. So he actually, in his case, there's a small stream that runs by and I think they have a sump pump down in there and they pump the water up into the cabin. I'm not sure what kind of filtration he has, but so in this case, the cabin was already here. He didn't have to deal with any of that, but I think that's how he gets his uh, water. For us, on this property we found, the one I showed in the, uh, the intro, um, we would have to drill our own well. And if we, when we drill it, we have to think about where we're gonna put our septic tank. And we also have to think about where septic tanks are on our neighbor's property. Well, fortunately for us, closest neighbor way up at the top of the mountain uh, that she's the only one who could really impact us the Baroness as we call her you know like the old Baroness sitting on top of the mountain in her castle um, and she could uh, so I don't think her septic tank is anywhere close to where we would be drilling a well at and she's got 30 acres and she's at least I'm gonna say seven, eight acres away from our nearest property border. So she can't, we can't put a well within a hundred feet of that septic tank. Well, so I'm a hundred percent sure we're not within a hundred feet of her septic tank. So then our only other challenge is, can we put a septic tank on our property um, where we're at? Now again, because we have 15 and a half acres we're looking at, we've got a very large area over which to find fortunately the most buildable area with the best views and all the easy access is almost dead center of the property which is you know ideal and that part of that's what's the attraction of this property is that um you know the the most beautiful part if you buy land it's one very rectangular right so it's not a weird shaped piece that you're going to have trouble finding a spot to build in and it's dead center of the land so well and septic shouldn't be any problem in fact i paid uh to have a have a crew come out and do soil testing even though we don't own the land we wanted to make sure it does what's called per perking which basically is short for percolation meaning that once the septic water leaves the tank it has to be able to flow out through a drain field and dissipate over time again that can't be anywhere can't be within 100 feet of your well and sounds like a good idea to me. In fact, I, I think 200 feet away from the well sounds like a great idea. And at 15 and a half acres, that's not a problem. Again, we found multiple perk areas. We actually had two areas tested. I think it cost us 325 for each test, and it cost about 700 bucks to get them all tested. But that's because I also want to build some other outbuildings. And not to get into all the details, but each building has to have its own septic zone. So went ahead and had that done up front, and then. Um, so we, those things were t taken care of and, uh, and then the last thing was power which I thought would be the least problematic because you know there's a road and I'm assuming with the road there's there's already utility easements in place um, but good thing my wife Julie she set it up to have the local power company come out Amicalola Electric and uh, they sent their engineer out. I met him out here on a cold morning and uh, it was an eye opener. Um, so we had been operating under the idea that to get power was gonna cost over around $10,000 and that was given to us, I think in good faith by the, uh, by the seller's agent. I think she, she, they had done some work in, in the past and that's what they had been told to get it to like a neighbor's property or something. But, turns out that in order to run it there and according to the engineer the best way is to go underground all the way because you avoid all the problems with trimming the trees and a whole bunch of other issues it's seven dollars and 25 cents a running foot and that's not counting if you got to go under a stream or you hit rock or any other stuff so all of a sudden okay well how far away are we from the road <laughs> And it's 725 a foot, what does that mean? And uh, again, I'm gonna let you guys do all the math, but I ran, I took one of those uh, wheels, um, you know, that has the measuring, that measures off feet, what the hell they're called, a pedometer or something like that. 
anyways, um, I walked it off all the way from the road. And to get to the site where we want to build is actually 2,500 feet. So a little, uh, little less than half a mile, we'd have to run electric, 725 a foot. We're looking at, at a minimum, probably of around $18,000. If we run into complications, we're probably looking at 2024. So, wow, put the brakes on everything. And uh, we decided to, uh, yeah, we called the real estate agent right away and said, okay, we got a problem. Uh, well, actually, let me back up. That wasn't really the big problem. You know, that's a problem that's solved by money and time. The real problem turned out when the, uh, when the uh, engineer said, oh, and by the way, you have to have um, a certified easement. And I said, well, it's a plat He says, no, that's just probably going to give you right away road access. But we need to have on file, notarized, and at the courthouse, a document that states the property owners between you, the property you're looking to buy and, and their property, that you have a right for them to bury the power cable through their property. And uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, crap. So I don't know whether our... The selling agent knew this, whether, you know, uh, how much they knew or not. Um, they seem like really good people, so I'm not going to cast any doubts on, on it. I think it might have been a little bit of a shock for them, too. Um, so essentially, there's seven property owners that border this road. Now, it doesn't, the power wouldn't have to go through all seven property owners' property. So, you know, we might be able to go through one or two, and there's some different routes. The long route, obviously, is coming up the main road, but there's also a, another road. Oh, look, there's the Robins. I would have thought they'd have been further south already. Um, but uh, there's a main road. Yeah, by the way, um, the start video I talk about, you know, I actually shot that a week and a half ago, and the leaves still hadn't fallen. Here we are a week later, and basically <laughs> all the leaves... As you can see, have fallen. Uh, anyways, um, so we get to uh, we have, I think, really three options to bring power to land: the long route, 2,500 feet; the short route, the, the mid route, 1,200 feet; and the short route, 900 feet. Obviously, if we can do any of those other two, it would be better than the long one. Uh, so right now the real estate agent, she's working on getting, the, we told her basically we're going to postpone this closing and definitely, in fact, we were supposed to close on Monday, the day I drove up here. Um, oh, look at that holly bush. It's full of berries. The robins and stuff will love that. It's, I think, it's a, supposed to be a good winter food source. Excuse me. Um. And uh, Christmassy. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons I love to move up here is just the number of birds and just the serenity of it all. Uh, so, anyways, um, that's where we're at. Is that uh, we are waiting to see if we can get these easements. Um, I think Julie and I want to talk to the. There's a new engineer involved. Uh, then the first one we talked to and only the real estate selling agent has talked to him and uh, Again, this isn't saying that there's anything wrong or or nefarious, but um, I definitely Want to make sure that we talk to them Directly because I, I told her I said we're not gonna close on this property until we know that uh, That uh, Amicola Electric is going to um, bring the power and, and I really kind of want something in writing from them because uh, you know are there options? Yeah, sure. Um, and have we explored some of those options um, such as going completely off grid? Yep. And I'll talk about that in another episode but just to get this one done I'm buying the land itself um you know we uh we really we feel like we want power to the land and we're not ready yet to make the uh what i would say uh the desperation of going completely off the grid i know there's some people argue with that um 
and uh and, and i think there's a lot of legitimacy um walk back up the mountain so if you ever come up here picklesheimer picklesheimer mountain it's not the treetop mountain lodge it's another rental property up here you can see i'm gonna take the camera this way as we walk back up you can see it's just gorgeous love this little valley he's in and i highly recommend you go look for it all right well i'm gonna leave it here uh see if we can uh see uh kind of the view here so we got speaking of power there's some power running up uh in uh beautiful north georgia um please like subscribe comment give me your thoughts and feedback especially if you are a solar expert help maybe Let's clarify some of these decisions and some ideas. Next episode, uh, hopefully we'll talk a little bit more about the land if we bought it. And also uh, um, our uh, ongoing design with the uh, architect uh, as he's working on our project. I know he's been putting pencil to paper here in the last week or two. So we're excited to see what's coming out of his mind and seeing if it works with our minds. And again, so, all right, thanks. And uh, talk to you later. Don't you agree With beating hearts we're still alive